But if you think, oh, no, I just read the Bible, then you really got them. So what we've got to do is recognize, first of all, that God wants to communicate with us, and the problem is not with the sender, it's with the receiver. I don't often hear what he's trying to say. This sin affects not only my interpretation, but my systematization and amplification of truth. Filter what, I, what is presented through your spirit-led understanding. You have the Holy Spirit too. If what I say, just red lights go off, check my biblical evidence. And then you must decide. Number two, new insights and theological adjustments are painful but necessary. The little thing I usually say here is, if you have not had a new thought about God in the last five years, you're brain dead. Did you think this stopped the minute you trusted Christ? You never heard of growing in Christ? You have no new insights in reading the Bible and coming to worship and, and reading Sundays? You, you have not thought anything new about God? Nothing has changed in your understanding of God in five years? Well, something's sick, something's wrong. You're meant to grow into Christ's likeness all your life. We can't quit growing. You say, well, I got, I got white hair. Join the club. You're not dead yet, are you? Then God expects you to know the Bible. Your grandkids need you to know the Bible. Your culture needs you to know the Bible. You don't get retired from knowing the Bible. Let me challenge your traditions. Let me slap Fiddler on the roof and see if they're biblical. In order to help our understanding, this seminar will employ it. Every, every hair pull Baptist I've ever had, I'm going to bring up. Now, do you think I can solve those things? Croak, no, I know that. But I'm going to pour those worms on the table. We'll look at those. I can't get those worms back in the jar. Interims can do wonderful things with worms. <laughs> this is what I want to do. I want to show valid, alternate, conservative interpretations... I want to show inappropriate biblical interpretations. There's a word here. Hermeneutics can never tell you what a text means, but hermeneutics can tell you what the text cannot mean. And if I've got five possibilities, five theories in church history, five denominational understandings, if I can limit two or three of those through hermeneutical principles of original author's intent, original historical setting, unique grammatical features, contemporary meaning of words, genre and parallel passages, even though I don't know exactly what it means, I think I've come a long way from five to two. So let's present the two and give the people of God the chance to let their spiritual gift, mind and heart, kick in. It, my, please don't get so mad at me in these illustrations that you forget that I'm trying to illustrate Bible interpretation principles. I'm using these examples to illustrate. So don't, I'm not trying to convince you they're right or want you to change. I'm using the examples as illustrations of improper and proper hermeneutical procedures to text. My approach, which I call the donkey in the two before, will get and keep your attention. It will. If I don't make you mad and you choose to come back, It'll go by fast. Number D, examples are meant to illustrate methodology. They're not meant to be definitive but thought-provoking. Christian maturity is a painful, tension-filled road of self-examination and spirit-led Bible study. Amen? Number five, I just added this recently. Why take the time to study hermeneutics? Believers must be able to self-feed. Too many Christians are tricked and sidetracked by minor issues. Believers must participate in regular Bible study, both corporately and individually. Believers must remember how great a privilege it is to have a written revelation from God. But this privilege is an awesome, ongoing, spiritual responsibility for our families, for our friends, and for our faith communities.